some of my chick chicks. This one here with the white is so adorable. Look at those big fluffy cheeks. They're pretty well behaved chicks. Keeps trying to focus on the chicken wire and not the chickens. Uh, this little one here. Get out of the way. Quit being such a diva. Uh, here, here's the two dark ones. That one looks like a turkey. That one over there looks like a vulture. Who knows? Uh, like I said, these were just handoffs. They're very sweet though, personable. Um, of course, like most young chickens, they didn't really like being picked up. But, uh, oh, guys, don't eat that, that's gross. Um, but they seem to like company. They get excited when anybody comes out here. They are growing rapidly and making a disgusting mess out of their water every single day, a couple times a day. You know, normal chicken stuff. For those of you that don't have chickens, that is extremely normal. They're going to make a mess of everything. Um, it's really a chicken's favorite pastime is uh, making your life hell. But um, anyway, just thought you guys might like to see those guys. Here's Sarah and Carl. Uh, one thing I've noticed, Carl is only nice. Um, he's only nice to Sarah and Muffin, my other black chickens. He does not seem to care much for the red girls, uh, Katie and Lucy. Um, and he's rather, he's been rather mean to the chicks. Uh, so, he and I are going to have to have a talk, because I'm not going to put up with that. He's a pretty good rooster, though. You going to eat my fingers? Hmm? There's Muffin. She's something. Oh, by the way, these just popped up. I did not plant these. Um, some kind of squash. I'm guessing probably uh, butternut squash, maybe, or acorn squash. Whenever we have winter squash, we pull the uh, the seeds and the guts out and throw out for the chickens to eat. They like it for the most part. Um, it's a nice sweet treat for them. Um, these are somehow growing far better than any squash I have ever planted. So apparently this nice loose soil here underneath the pine trees next to the house, um, it's just making them all kinds of happy. So, and the chickens surprisingly are not shredding them like they do literally everything else that I plant. So I'm just gonna let them do what they're gonna do if they don't, I mean, there's like a, a little fruit right in there. I guess that's a female flower. Um, we'll just see what it does. Okay guys, you may have seen this stuff growing around your neck of the woods if you live in the south or southeast of the US. I'm not sure where else it grows. I know it's pretty common here in the south. Um, this is actually Passiflora or Passionflower. And it does grow a fruit. Uh, I don't think I've got, ooh, we do have one in flower. There is the Passionflower. They don't smell particularly nice. Uh, they're not smelly or anything. They're just not great. Um, they are a mild sedative. Um, I actually had some passion flower tea before bed last night. It's quite nice. Um, you will notice that ants take quite a liking to these plants. Um, 
They don't seem to do any harm to them. Uh, they vine. You can see some tendrils here. They will go crazy. They grow on like a runner underground. Um, and if you have one in your yard and it flowers and fruits, you will have a ton. Um, I had one against my fence last year. The backyard's a mess, excuse it. I had one against this fence last year here. Um, and from plucking fruits off, feeding them to the chickens, I've got over 25 growing in the backyard. They are everywhere. Um, the fruits are uh, sometimes called maypops. They're, uh, they are passion fruit. They're related to the tropical passion fruit that you can buy in, uh, in the grocery store in some areas. But these are uh, more of a temperate growing plant. They're attractive, I think. I think they have a nice leaf shape. And, um, and the fruits are really, really quite good. They're t very tart. Um, and the seeds are very crunchy uh, and edible. Um, some people don't like them. Uh, if you make like a passion fruit puree, some people will strain it, some people won't. Uh, I tend to just rip the fruits open and eat them. Uh, that is when I can steal some away from the chickens. They will reach up and snatch it off the vine if they can. Uh, they do it all the time with the mulberry trees too. Uh, they're pretty, pretty big fans of mulberries. Um, I'll show you some of those too. But before I do, I've got another nice passion flower here. God, I can't even see my screen. There we go. They're just very pretty flowers, unusual shape. Um, we've had quite a bit of drought. We had, what, two weeks where we didn't have a single drop of rain. Um, and a very bad hot spell. I mean, it was incredible. This time of year, it's normally very humid. Um, not the most humid part of the year, but pretty humid. And um, it was it was dry, um, which made it all the more difficult when I planted grass seed. I had to purchase a tripod sprinkler because this time of year we should have rain and we were not getting it at all. And now we're right in the middle of uh, a drenching. We've had rain almost every single day for a week um, and there's still some in the forecast. So I guess Mother Nature is trying to help us catch up. And I appreciate it. Um, oh. Here, these are spent flowers, but uh, this is Nicotiana. It's um, in the Solanaceae family, so a relative of tomatoes, tobacco, potatoes, etc. Um, just an ornamental. Um, I believe it's a self seeding perennial. We do get some pretty good sized stalks come back every, every year. And uh, I've got white ones, red ones, and pink ones. And unfortunately, there aren't any flowers open right now. Um, but they are very pretty uh, flowers. So I'll try to get some of those on camera next time they bloom, instead of just some wilted, crappy-looking ones. Yet another uh, self-sown plant here. Another member of the cucurbits. Um, I believe that this is probably a dipper gourd. Um, gr growing fantastically somehow. Um, I had planted some last year and uh, they did not do well. So uh, I only got a couple of fruits off of them and uh, one of them slipped past me when the grass was really tall at the end of the year, uh, and I guess a couple of seeds made it. This thing is taking off. This is the end of one side, and it's shooting off some more over here. There's another little one here. Uh, so, 
you know, it's not hurting anything. I'll let it go. This is my Celeste fig. It's really hard to get a sense of scale. Um, I am six feet tall, and I cannot touch the, I can't touch the top leaves uh, up there. Um, these guys, I'm gonna have to put some, give them some attention. I did treat with borax this year um, to treat a boron deficiency because normally the fruits will get about to that size and then they just dry up and fall off. Uh, and some of them are, but I treated twice with borax. Um, and there are some fruits starting to get a decent size. I Honestly, I'll be surprised if I even get one or two uh, that make it to full maturity. Uh, this is an apricot um, that did some funky stuff when I planted the tree. I got it as a very young tree. It was a grafted variety. Um, and what happens sometimes with grafts is the graft will reject. Um, so you'll end up with... What they do is they take a, a fruit tree, a variety of a fruit tree, and uh, they'll take and cut the top off of a variety that has very strong um, roots uh, that are resistant to disease and pests and things like that. And they'll graft a more desirable fruiting variety on top of that. And it doesn't mean that the rootstock variety is inedible or undesirable. It's just not as good. It's going to be missing some qualities that the uh, fruit stock variety would have. Um, it's supposed to be a super sweet apricot. The graft died, and I thought, well, that's too bad. Lost a tree. And then it came back from the rootstock. So I've never eaten one off of it out of the several years I've had it because it keeps dropping fruits. It also keeps getting eaten up by something. Um, and I believe I have an issue with boring insects. Uh, I don't mean ones that can't hold a, an interesting conversation. I mean ones that actually burrow into the wood of the, the tree and eat their way to the tips or back to the roots. Um, none of my plums made it on this dwarf plum and it is really badly eaten up. Uh, I do treat most of my stuff with uh, neem oil a couple of times a year to try to stave off any insect issues. Um, it doesn't always work uh, and it's really difficult this time of year when, um, especially this year, with how um, insane our rain has been. You don't want to leave that oily film on a plant that's going to be baking in the sun all day, um, but you also don't want to put it on right before it rains so it can get washed off. But, uh, ooh, hey, we've got a fig here. Hmm. It's probably ripe. It's not falling off yet, though. So I normally just wait for them to, they'll just pop right off when you touch them. If you guys have never had a fresh fig, you are seriously missing out. They are incredible. One of my absolute favorite fruits, and I will always have a fig tree for as long as I can. Um, several years ago, we had a massive crop on this. Um, it was about this size, actually. Uh, we had so many figs come off of this tree. Um, and, and I'm telling you, I love figs. I will eat some figs. We couldn't eat them all. Um, me, my family, and my friends could not eat them all, and we ended up with probably 10 or 12 pounds of figs sliced up and frozen because I didn't want to waste them. Uh, I will find a way to not do that again. You end up with freezer burned stuff, so. Um, but seriously, get yourself a fig tree. If you can grow them in your area, get one. They're incredible. Um, the Celeste variety here uh, is a nice sweet fig. Um, pretty good producer. 
they are lighter colored so if you're used to something like a brown turkey um, they're gonna be ripe before you think they are um, they will get some color on them as you saw on that one um, brown turkeys tend to be a little darker um, anyway okay this one here is a gooseberry that has some seriously dangerous spikes. Those things are crazy. I don't know what's up with this tree. Somebody gave it to me. They said it was a maple. It's obviously not any kind of maple. Um, it gets these weird, almost look like tree tumors. Um, I don't know what's up with that, but it gets it all over. Um, it could be another insect issue, but I don't know. Uh, it's never fruited. I don't know if it will. I don't know enough about gooseberries to know anything. If anybody knows anything, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, maybe, maybe you've got something, uh, some information I could use, but I don't know what the heck that is. And the mighty mulberry. Um, it can be kind of hard to differentiate between the, the types, the white, the red, and the black uh, mulberries. But mul mulberries are pretty distinctive. Um, they're interesting because they can have leaves that are very regularly shaped and on the same tree have mildly lobed and uh, sometimes even quite deeply lobed leaves. Um, Here's an, this is another of the same variety, and uh, see the deep lobes, really interesting. Um, and it doesn't seem to be like a, a maturity thing either, they just have a huge variation in their leaves. I mean, even like some very young leaves have deep lobe, lobes, um, and others don't, so. Um, but these guys are... They're, they're weird trees. Um, their fruit doesn't all ripen at the same time. So you get ripening of the fruit over a few weeks. Um, and I find if you pick them at any point less than almost black, they're rather tart. Um, but when they're fully ripe, they're kind of a single note sweetness. They they're not like, they don't have a, a rich berry flavor or anything like that. They're just mildly flavored and, uh, and just sweet. Um, but I will say, if you have any mulberries, if you have one mulberry, you will have thousands of them. Uh, the, they drop berries at a, an alarming rate. Um, and they will seed extremely easily. Um, this is a bunch of baby ones that just pop up every year. Um, I sprayed a bit of brush killer out here. Um, I love mulberries and I love plants. Um, I do not want a forest uh, encroaching on my entire backyard though. Um, we've got a, a decent sized yard. We're probably on two-thirds of a lot and uh, two-thirds of a of an acre lot sorry um, but I'd rather keep it closer to that size than just let it kind of take over because it will seriously take over um, they pop up everywhere and you just have to be diligent about pulling them out or killing them off um, we also get a lot of blackberry and uh, I I like blackberries okay but um, and I know you're probably thinking leaves of three, you know, it's not poison ivy though. I'm very familiar with poison ivy. Poison ivy does not have spines on it like that. Um, we do have poison ivy here, as you can see. These blackberries are not worth eating. They are bitter. Um, they stain everything and they pop up everywhere and they will completely take over your yard. Another thing that I spray every single year to try to get rid of. Um, this thing, whatever the heck it is, keeps popping up everywhere. I don't know what it is. Um, but they are 
unruly. Uh, they just kind of sprawl all over your yard. I can't stand them, so I get rid of those. Just gonna walk you around, show you some of this stuff. This is the biggest this has ever been. This is a French mulberry, um, not an edible fruit variety. Um, it's got its friend pokeweed sticking out here. As you can see, pokeweed. The uh, French mulberry has these really tiny, delicate flowers, and then uh, after it flowers, it fruits. Uh, like I said, not an edible fruit uh, for us. The birds tend to like it, which is why it probably ended up in my yard. Um, but it has the the berries are like like fuchsia um, or magenta. They're super bright, really, really pretty. Um, I don't mind this plant. Uh, I'd be fine with it if it filled in right here at the base of this one. But this is the biggest this has ever been. I mean, they're massive. Massive leaves on this thing. Um, not sure the binomial on this guy. Uh, but I do know that it's a French mulberry. And this stupid reed grass or whatever it is that's popping up everywhere. I've sprayed it too. Um, this, this year it's been crazy. Uh, with all the stuff popping up. I mean, look, we got more passion fruit growing over here. Um, this is Virginia Creeper. Many of you in the South are familiar with that. And also, uh, Scuppernong grapes, a type of muscadine. Um, they're thick-skinned, heavily seeded grape, but they are a... Uh, a southern delicacy. Um, I grew up eating these. They grow wild everywhere. They're delicious. They make fantastic wine. Um, it, it might be an acquired taste. Uh, some people that didn't grow up eating these as wild candy um, don't really care for the flavor. They are a kind of musky. Um, it's hard hard to describe, but they're to me they're uh, delicious and a reminder of my childhood playing outside with my friends and plucking grapes. Um, anyway, I think that's going to be it for this one. I've gone far too long. I'm going to see if I can trim some mumbling bits out. And uh, this is just a quick catch up on a few things just to show you what's going on around the yard. See you guys next time.